Let's look at the uh, Tinius Olsen tensile compression machine. Good to 120,000 pounds of pull or compression. Uh, variety of jaws. We like to use these uh, jaws that have our clamp jaws. This is a sample that will fit in those. Uh, we have a lot of these, so we like to use these. Uh, the way this works is you simply place it in, clamp the jaw tight, and you see up here, it's a knurled ring, give it a twist, and it's good to go. Now, we're not ready to hook up yet, but that just gives you an idea. Our extensiometer here, which measures the movement of the steel in this particular case. And then over here is our manual uh, control. You can see the force is now set at minus 445. That can be zeroed. And the extensiometer at minus 7 inches is probably a bit off. That can be zeroed as well, so zero four zero auxiliary. Um, the software, if we look at the computer, this TO Navigator, this should be up and running for you. Your instructor should do this, but just in case, now you know where it is. It takes a few seconds to load. And this is Tinius Olson's uh, data collection software. And there it is. Um, you can see we have a stress strain curve already ready to go. Um, the tests, if the test is not set up, you can go file, load test settings. Uh, this looks like it's set up for steel. But I can say load test setting, and you can see I have HVCC metal tensile, and you can use one of those. So it's set up for that. Now, the way this uh, tester works is that we're going to use our test sample, and we gauge it first. What do I mean by that? We need to mark off the, the test length, which is two inches, as you know from your manual. So I need to indicate two inches across the test portion of the specimen which is between the fillets where I'm running my finger now. We have that done here. This is exactly two inches. And we set our sample in the stand, place the marker, hold it gently. You do not hit this to send it into next week. That is madness. We give it a nice love tap. Gentler for the uh, for the plastics, but you'll see I have two indents in there, and that's the test specimen. That's the gauge length, two inches. Okay, that's important. Then I can mount this in the machine. But before I do that, let's turn the machine on. So over here, there's my emergency stop. I always know where that is. Start button. And this starts the hydraulics, it's a little loud. And what we do is we add fluid with this captain's wheel on the right, and we remove fluid from the cylinder with this captain's wheel on the left. You'll notice on the machine, the hydraulics, it's all the way down. You see how the bellows is completely compressed? Watch that as I hit the load button, and I'm gonna crank that up a little bit. You'll see it starts to rise, you see that? So we put about an inch of oil into it. Now you, you can get a roller if you don't know, but this way the machine's not sitting on bottom or off the bottom of the piston. So I put about an inch into it. Doesn't matter exactly how much. And I close the valve and it's all good to go. So there's about an inch of oil in here. Now what we can do is mount our specimen. What do I have? I have, oh, Blue on the one side and Hoyt on the other. Well, that's 1018. Is it hot rolled or cold rolled? Correct, it's cold rolled. We know that from the color markings. So I'll mount the top, squeeze the knurl, and I'll also reach up top and tighten the nut up top here. Oh, good job, there you go. And just make sure it's all nice and tight. Now, this bottom one, I don't want to wait all day so I pull it up and I go, oh my gosh, doesn't quite fit. See, I'm, I'm a little short. So what I'm going to do is come over here and I'll use the raise and lower buttons and it raises and lowers this bottom unit. So I think, let's go up a little bit. And you don't need to go much. Now it fits over the sample. 
and there's a little looseness in there. You might want to drop it a little bit, or we could drop a little oil out of it here. You know, if we cranked it up more than an inch, we could just drop a little oil like that, and just kind of pre-tighten it a little bit, and that way we don't wait forever for the first test to start. That's all. It's not incredibly important. Before we get too far, we need to measure the diameter of our specimen. We know it's nominally half an inch, but let's just do that and read that we are at 0 0.50, looks like about two or three from here. I have to read it at a better angle, but there you go. So remember, this is there's no such thing as exactly half an inch. It's plus or minus, and you need to get that using your caliper. So. Now that we've done that, we can mount our test specimen with the extensometer, and we'll get it on the roller here, level it up, and I did that again. Let me do one more time. This arm goes up and down, makes our measurement. This is what holds it, and we squeeze it here to mount it. So we need to get that nicely in place and mounted. And again, you should not do doing this without your instructor present. This is a very expensive piece of equipment. Once done, we're now ready to do the test. So let's see what we do. We need to start the machine, if it isn't already. Zero our force. Do that again. Zero the force. Zero the extensometer. Come over to the software. We need to put in a lot number, so I'll put in 1018 cold rolled. Operator, myself, sample. Now well, I can do the same again 1018 cold rolled. Sample one. Diameter. 0.50123503. And when we're ready to test, I go test now, and I turn on the captain's wheel, and I go up to about six or seven, maybe as high as ten to get it started and take up a load. I can pre-turn it on because there's slack in the system, so I could turn it on and then hit test now and you'll notice that nothing's happening because the load's not taken up yet. And you can see very quickly 600, 700, 800 pounds. Take a look at what's happening on the computer screen. That red line is the modulus of elasticity and that will fall over as we continue to pull up. A little hard to see it here but the black line underneath it is the uh, strain reading, which we can see over on our monitor here. And you can see that it's 0 0.04, 0 0.05. So we're measuring load versus deflection. The computer converts that to stress and strain. How does it do that? It knows the cross-sectional area, and it knows the test gauge is two inches. You'll notice that the axes on the graph automatically uh, and adjusts accordingly. It was at 50, it's now at 75, and take a look at that curve. It's starting to fall over. What's happened is, is we've yielded the steel. That blue line indicates yield, and now we're running over and going plastic. We now can remove the instrument, and we must do this before the test finishes. And now we can actually focus here on the interior. We're not collecting data points anymore. So we're done with data collection. This particular test only pulls off the linear portion and the first 1% of plasticity. But take a look, I'm going to speed it up, and you will see that the specimen starts to neck at the end. It gets very narrow. You see it? As soon as the specimen breaks, we close the load. And now we need to enter two pieces of information into the computer. The final diameter and the length of the sample. Now how are we going to do that? Well, let's look. 